Well, hello 3C. We're going to go over a little review of powers today. This shouldn't take too long. Our goal is I remember the rules of working with exponents and can apply them to various situations. So you've got a sheet here that summarizes all of the exponent laws and it's got a general case situation here for you that's already been written down. We're just going to go through a few examples here that you'll need to copy down on your own. So the product of powers, the general case says if we have two bases, now notice the bases are the same here. Um, maybe I should grab a pencil. This might be a little bit better to see if I'm, uh, if I've got a thing that looks like a pencil. Okay. So we've got two bases that are exactly the same. The x's are our bases and then we have two exponents. Now if I want to put this together when I multiply, if I want the, to put them together, all I have to do is add those two exponents. Now what does that mean as far as an example goes? Well here's an example. So we have a 2 to the 3 times, that's what that dot means is multiplication, times 2 to the 4. Now this means I have three twos and another four twos all multiplied together so I just have to add those to see that in total I have seven twos all multiplied together. So that's two to the exponent seven. Now for quotient, and a quotient means division, and most of the time you're going to see these top to bottom, but you might also see it with the division symbol. So this could have been x to the m with the division symbol divided by x to the n. We don't see that as often though, so that's why I've written it top to bottom. If that's the case, when you're dividing, you subtract the exponents, m subtract n. So these exponents on the bottom divide away that equivalent amount of exponents on the top. So what's that look like with a numeric example? Well, we're going to use the twos again. 2 to the exponent 8 over 2 to the exponent 2. Well, these 2's are going to divide away 2 of those 2's, so we're just left with 2 to the exponent 6. Just 8 subtract 2 gives us our new exponent of 6. Now notice that the base never changes. Okay, When we multiply or when we divide, we don't do anything with the base, the exponents just get simplified. Now when we have a power of a power, what this actually means is that I have multiple brackets like this all multiplied together. So I have x to the m, x to the m, x to the m all out uh, a certain amount of times, n times. Okay. When that happens all we have to do is multiply these two exponents together. Now what I really want you to notice here is that there is no base in between them. There's no new base in between these two exponents. So when that's the case, then you multiply. Up here, if you've got two bases with two exponents, that's when you add. So it's important to know the difference. So here's an example. If I have 3 squared all to the power 4, the base stays the same and I just multiply those two exponents. The 2 times the 4 gives us the 8. Now here is power of a product, which, and this is almost exactly the same as power of a power, except that we have a multiplication inside the brackets. Now when that happens, this outside exponent belongs to the two things inside as well. So we can just split it up as x to the m, y to the m here when we have the whole thing. Now what's that look like as an example? Well, if I have 3a, and 3a is multiplied together, 3a all to the exponent 3, that 3 comes in on both of those things. So I get 3 cubed a cubed. Both of these things get the 3. Um, carrying on. We have a power of a quotient. So a power of a quotient, this means that the m gets applied to both the top and the bottom. Just like this. And here's our example. If I have a cubed on top over 2 on the bottom, then this 2, since it's also a power of a power, those get multiplied together. So I do have to do 3 times 2, and I get a to the 6th. And now this 2 on the bottom, and it's sort of a multiplication as well, because we can think of there as being a 1 on the 2, even though it's not there. Um, we understand that to be a 1, and then we do 2 times 1 to give us 2 to the exponent 2. And 2 to the exponent 2 is pretty simple. 
that's just four. So usually when we have an, a number that small, like if we get a huge power, if you evaluate it and it turns out to be like 10 million or something, you're not going to change that into 10 million. It's easier and simpler to leave it as the power. But if you have two squared, it makes sense to change it into the four that's in that um, fraction. Now negative exponents, a couple ways we deal with negative exponents. Remember negative exponents means take the reciprocal. So there's two different ways. If I just have a plain uh, exponent, a plain base to a negative exponent, I can either just flip the base over and so I have 1 over x and make that all to the m, or because of the power of a quotient rule that we just went over, the m applies to both of those. So we would technically have 1 to the m over x to the m. But 1 to any exponent is simply just 1. So we don't usually write that on there. And we can simplify it and just go straight from x to the negative m means 1 over x to the positive m. A lot of times we'll do that. So here, um, 2 to the negative 5 means 1 over 2 to the positive exponent 5. Uh, and 2 to the positive exponent 5 is a small enough number we can evaluate it. 2 to the fifth is 32. So our answer becomes 1 over 32. Now, with negative exponents, if I have a fraction that is my base, I can just flip it over and change the exponent to positive. Um, so here's what that looks like. If I have 3 over 7, that would be the same thing as 7 over 3. We got the negative 2 here and a positive 2 here. So flip over the base and change the sign on the exponent and you get something that's equivalent. Uh, and of course 7 squared and 3 squared are pretty straightforward so you can just go 7 squared is 49 and 3 squared is 9. And remember that that requires, like when we flip it over in that 2, because of this power of a quotient rule that we had up, up here, um, now that applies to both the top and the bottom there. So 49 over 9. Now, the identity exponent, and we never called it that when we looked at it before, but I'm going to put it in this um, summary list anyway. The identity exponent just means that um, if I have a power of 1, that's exactly the same as if I have no power at all. And there's a numeric example. 200 to the exponent 1 just is equivalent to 200. So if you have an x to the exponent 1 or an b to the exponent 1. You can just write them as b or vice versa. If you have a b, you know there's a 1 on it, even though you can't see it. Now remember that the 0 exponent, when we talked about it before, the 0 exponent means that something has been divided by itself. So basically x to the 0 means that I have an x divided by an x. And when I divide x by x, I get 1. And it doesn't matter what x is. x could be 10 or 100 or 1,000. Whenever I divide something by itself, my answer is always 1. So numerically, it looks like this. And I just picked some random number here. 2,569 to the exponent 0 equals 1. Now this one I don't think I mentioned before, and we're just going to throw it in here now. It's the indeterminate case. If I have 0 to the exponent 0, um, think about that before. We t said before that anything to the 0 means that something's been divided by itself. Well, what happens if you divide 0 by 0? It doesn't make any sense. Ask Siri what happens when you divide 0 by 0. You don't get anything good. So we call that indeterminate. And there's really no example that I can give you here for indeterminate other than 0 equals 0 because that's the only thing that is indeterminate. And so that was just a quick recap of all your exponent laws. And so you have some homework to do. You probably find this a little bit more straightforward than even the stuff we did in the last spiral. Okay, good luck.